Colin will sell it, says Macmillan. And sure enough, tickets for the event are going like hot cakes. The point is, someone with Macmillan's pull factor can ensure the hottest classical stars will say yes when invited to play at his Ithbeton Track Festival. And local folk trust him enough to put on something they may not be familiar with, but when played by the best musicians around is well worth a try. Just look at the red hot lineup for this year's festival, which runs from this Thursday to Sunday 1 October. Besides Scott's born Curry, who opens the four-day program in Come Knock Town Hall with the Scottish Ensemble, and a brand new work for solo percussion, piano, electronics and ensemble by Dave Merrick, this year's visiting artists include the first-ever venture north of the border by London's Waldron and Westminster Cathedral Choir, as well as hot young guitarist Sean Scheib and the richly burnished brass virtuosi of the Wallace Collection. Macmillan is over the moon that the Westminster Choir and its director Martin Baker are gracing his hometown, and what's more, staying on to lead the festival mass. Just think, the choir will be singing its usual Sunday cathedral gig, but doing it here in St. John's Church, where I played the organ as a teenager, he says. The core reason for their visit is a concert the day before to perform one of Macmillan's most treasured works, The Seven Last Words from the Cross, in which they team up with this year's artists in residence, the Volstring Scottish Ensemble. It's the first time Macmillan has programmed a major work of his own at the festival. I've held off including big pieces of mine, but I knew there would have to be one at some point, he explains. Getting the right one and ensuring it was suitable for the modest halls and churches we have in Cumnock was important to him. But when the Westminster Cathedral Choir indicated they might come up, coupled with the fact the Scottish Ensemble were involved with Capella Nova in the work's original premiere, all the necessary components fell into place. Commissioned in 1994 by BBC Television, who screened it in nightly episodes during Holy Week, it's a work the composer holds especially dear. It has been, and still is, performed extensively around the globe, he says, but it hasn't been heard in Scotland for several years, and never before in Cumnock. Elsewhere in this year's festival, Macmillan places emphasis on local talent. In the same program as The Seven Last Words, Sean Scheib and the Scottish Ensemble will premiere two new works by a Chinlet composer Michael Murray, one of them a guitar concerto called Pilgrims. Murray's story is the stuff of fantasy. I remember him when he was still at school, says Macmillan. He was a shy, very serious youngster who came over and showed me incredible scores in the style of Cajuns and Akis. Then in the melee of the day we just went our separate ways and I often wondered what happened to him. It turns out that Murray, now in his 30s, never went on to study music, but worked instead as a night watchman in an air shopping mall, where he regularly whiles away the hours writing music. He lives for compassing, does it every day of his life. He's very flexible in style. Sometimes he really pushes the envelope with modernist traits other times you hear influences of folk, rock and jazz. There's more local music by the hugely talented Jay Caperald, whose tasteful originality and musical eccentricities have been championed by Macmillan in previous trysts. This year he's written a work for the Wallace Collection and Dalmillington Band called As Above, So Below. Jay and John Wallace had this great idea, where the Wallace Collection are virtuoso concertante soloists against some fantastic but manageable writing for the band, Macmillan explains. So once again, Cumnock and the surrounding towns will resonate to a weekend of great music thanks to a festival that has successfully brought together world-leading artists with local choirs and schools. Macmillan's influence is paramount. He brings funding from as far away as the USA and is confident the festival has a rosy future. I think we can expand more, he says. We'll test the ground over the next few years. The Cumnock Trist runs from 28 September until 1 October. Full program details at www.thecomnotris.com.